This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. If we really, if every believer, if everyone who considers themselves to be a follower of Christ was really out in their part of the world walking in love, I would venture to say that most of the world would already be saved. And we absolutely would not have the mess in our society that we have today. And many people today are interested in what the answer is to our dilemma in the world. And from a spiritual standpoint, I believe that the answer to that dilemma is really getting out in society and representing Christ. Not just having a bunch of dead, dry religion, but really having the character of God developed in our life, walking in the fruit of the Spirit, which the Bible says there's no law that can come against the fruit of the Spirit. You see, when we walk in love, it's, it's impossible for people to really find anything wrong with you. They may try for a period of time, but love will melt the hardest, coldest heart. But it has to be real love. So I'm calling this tonight, what is true love? You know, there's magazines, true love, true romance. So I guess if there's true love, then there must be an untrue love. And if there's true romance, there must be an untrue romance. So the kind of love that is no good is the kind we talk about that has no action to it at all. It's just a conversation. It's just a sermon. But when it comes down to really putting it to work in our daily lives, then we back off from that. And you know what? There's a lot of stuff to learn to really be a powerful Christian. I mean, I've got, I mean, I've got thousands of messages that I've preached, and they're all vital, and they're all good, but you know, some days when I just feel like, you know, man, Lord, I don't know, I don't know if I'm doing it all. You know, there's this message, and that message, and this one, and that one, another one, another one. I just center back to walk in love. If you just walk in love, you're going to cover all the rest of them. Amen? Love God. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That just keeps it simple for me. So for the last good number of years in my life, I have tried to focus more than anything else in my personal life on loving people and everybody that I get around in my personal life, because believe it or not, I don't live in the little box. I do have a personal life. They let me out of the TV screen occasionally. <laughs> people are amazed when they see me somewhere. It's like I'm not supposed to be anywhere but in that box. But I do have a personal life life. And in my personal life, I try to make it my business to add value to everybody that I come across. And I'll tell you the truth, in the natural, I'm not a real outgoing, friendly person. <laughs> I mean, I'd much rather stand in front of a crowd of a million people than try to get to know one person. I'm not afraid of people, but I'm just I'm just, you know, that's just the way I am. I'm not like a sanguine, real friendly. I mean, we go out to eat, and I mean, Dave is talking to the waitress about where do you go to school, and what are you taking in school, and where'd you come from, what are you going to do with your life, and I'm like, Dave, can we order the food, eat it, and get out of here? And he's like, well, I just want to be friendly. And I'm telling you what, the, the, Mike, the pastor that was up here, he can get on an elevator, and by the time he gets off, have a friend. So I'm just letting you know that it doesn't have to be your natural gift. That's not, you know, I would probably, my natural bent would be to go out in society, go shop and do my stuff, just not say much to anybody, just do what I wanted to do, get the job done, get it over with and go back home. But I have learned that I can affect people's lives just by being friendly. So I've learned to do that. And I'm trying to let you know that even though something may not be a real natural gift for you, if it's something that God leads us to do, we can learn to do it. Amen? 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 
Now, all you, fr all you people that were born friendly, you're just like all over this. <laughs> and some of you deeper people are like, well, I don't know if I really want to get involved or not. I'm not asking you to get involved, say hello. How are you? How's your day? That color looks good on you. Your hair looks nice. You know, just simple little things. It's amazing how just a simple little adding value to someone's life can make a big difference. Amen. What I'm talking to all of us about tonight, and you know, if there's anybody in the room who thinks you don't need this, you can throw your share back at me because I'd just be happy to preach this to myself. I need this. Every time I teach on love, every time I restudy on love, it builds me up and reminds me that this really is one of the most important things that we can possibly do in our lives. And it's not always in big things. Many times it is in small little things like smiling at somebody or saying hello or telling somebody, you know, I've noticed that you've been here for several years. I bet you really work hard. You know, one day I was in a, in a bathroom and I noticed a lady in there emptying the trash and I'd seen her a few times. And so I took some money out of my purse and gave it to her. And I just said, you know, I'm sure that you really work hard and a lot of times you don't really get, you know, the, the appreciation that you need. I shoved the money in her hand and just took off. A little bit later, she came chasing me into the shoe department telling me how much it meant to her and how it was just so amazing. And you know what? People are hurting in the world and they're hurting a lot worse than you think you are. There's always somebody, no matter how bad we're hurting or no matter how bad we've got it, there's always somebody that's got it worse than we do and somebody that's hurting worse than we do. And just for the sake of God, we need to get out in the world and act like Jesus. How would Jesus treat these people as he came into contact with them? You know, we, we always talk about following in Jesus' steps. Well, sometimes we need to study his stops because Jesus always stopped for hurting people. It wasn't just, yes, he was going somewhere and he had a goal, but when somebody really needed help, he was always there to help him. And you know, a lot of that is lacking in our society today and nobody's gonna bring it back if the Christians don't. So we need to stop just yelling about our Christianity and get out there and live it <clears throat> so people can see that we've got something that's worth having. <clears throat> The Bible teaches us in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, that we are to pursue this love. Pursue it, go after it with all of your might. That's been one of the things that has helped me in studying the love walk probably more than anything else is to realize it's something that I have to do on purpose. It's not something I can wait to feel like doing. It's not something I wait to want to do. It's something that I do. Don't just pray for God to bless you. Pray that God will make you a blessing everywhere that you go. And it's fine to pray that God will bless you. Every day I say, God, I ask you to bless me and I ask you to make me a blessing everywhere that I go. Don't let me go out in the world, God, and act like I don't have ears and eyes. Help me to hear what people say, help me to see their needs, and help me to meet those needs. We don't even really need to pray for God to meet somebody's need if we could do it and just don't want to. Uh-oh, I better say that again. We don't even really need to pray for God to meet somebody else's need if we could do it and just don't want to. Well, you know, you can't do everything. That's right. You cannot do everything, but you better not do nothing. There's a difference in thinking we have to do everything and doing nothing. I can't do everything for everybody, but I refuse to do nothing for anybody. Amen. Some people just push your buttons. And no matter how hard you try to love them, they take you from zero to on edge in no time flat. So how do you see the good in people when it's really hard to find? Today, we're offering Joyce's new book, Loving People Who Are Hard to Love, for your donation of any amount. Loving that difficult person may not change the world, but it could change yours and theirs. Loving People Who Are Hard to Love. Contact us now at JoyceMeyer.org 
or call toll free 1-800-727-9673. Need a girl's trip? Register now for the Love Life Women's Conference, September 22nd through 24th in St. Louis, Missouri. Come on, register now and join us. So the Bible is God's manual to help us navigate life. But life often gets in the way of knowing the Bible, finding the time, knowing where to begin, and discovering what this all means to you. We understand, and we'd like to help. At JoyceMeyer.org study, you'll find free resources to help you get more out of the Bible. Whether you're a new Christian or have been walking with Christ for years, so jump in today. The Word. It's free, it's mobile, and it's tailored for you at JoyceMeyer.org. Let's just talk really honest today, Joyce. There are some people in the world that are not easy to get along with. And but it's not me. No, no, present and it's not company you. accepted. Yes, absolutely not. But we all have to deal with those people that, that we just can't find a way to make things work. And right. so what we want to talk about today are some suggestions mm -hmm. to help us handle those people that we can't quite mesh with, that we can't get along with. And you know, as that is not me, and it's not you. To be, but to be honest, <laughs> we're all hard for somebody to get along with. Exactly. I've thought about that so much. Who am I that person for? You know, yeah, I, I'm sure there are a lot. First of all, it's just personality. You know, we we all have a different temperament, a God given temperament, and you you're you can't be something else. That's you know that yeah. that's what you're going to be. And certain temperaments naturally mix well together more so than others do. And I'll just, I'll, I'll share one type of person that's a little more difficult for me. Like, uh, I'm a type A, choleric means I want to be in charge. I want, want to keep things going. I want to know what's going on. I want to have a plan. And um, uh, when I'm in a serious mode, when I'm trying to get something done, I want to stay focused. I want to do it. And uh, uh, a friend of mine told me one time, she said, I finally figured out that you're a, you're a person who lives on purpose. You, you have a plan and you do it on purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just say that I'm with a, a sanguine personality, which is the fun, loving, everything's a party. We're going to giggle and laugh about everything. And we, we have to thank God for those people because if everybody was like me, it could be a sour world. <laughs> but they— But we get a lot done. But, but we do get a lot done. <laughs> I do. I get a lot done, and I get more done right. than those people do. That's why but we need everybody. That's why we need everybody because every personality brings something to the world that all the rest of us need. And uh, one of the habits that a sanguine person has— is, of course, they talk a lot, and they they like to get real close to you when they talk, and sometimes they like to even hold on to you Oh, when they talk to you. <laughs> and I can't stand that. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, I feel like they're trying to make me do something. Right. So, and I don't like to be made to do things. Now, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with them. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. Right. It just means that we have to... Find a way to adapt to one another. And, you know, we are required by God to love everybody, but some people we have to love from a distance. And that's okay. <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah. It's like you don't, you don't have to have to love everybody, but you don't have to enjoy every single person's personality, and temperament. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, we're going to try. We need to make allowances for people. We need to remember that we have problems. There's things about me that I'm sure irritate other people. You know, I'm very straightforward. That's very hard for some people. And so, um, there, are, there are things that can help. Yeah. And one of the things is 
the way you feel about yourself is going to really help or hurt how you get along with other people. Mm -hmm. Because if you are, say, if you don't give yourself much mercy, then you're not going to be as willing to give other people mercy. Right. If I expect a lot of myself. Right. Then you expect a lot of Naturally, I expect a lot of other people. A lot of other people. And, uh, like, I like things done, you know, get it done. And so people that are slower and time (laughs) over, (laughs) you know, I'm just like, (laughs) can we just get this done? (laughs) And uh, my husband is always teasing me. And then this is the truth. I'm always like, in my mind, I'm one step ahead of where I'm at. And I'm not saying this is a good trait because it's not. But when we will be coming down our street, we're not even at our driveway yet, I will always have my hand on the door, (laughs) on the handle. And he said to me last night, Joyce, we're not there yet. Do not open the door. (laughs) And my daughters had to tell me, Mom, would you not open the door till I park the car? (laughs) And uh, Don't get out while the car's still moving. Don't get out while the car is is not moving. And... uh, or while the car is moving. So we all have things. What, yeah. What's one of yours? What's one of your bad habits? Uh, well, I'll give you an example of someone that I could not get along with. And um, this was someone that I hadn't met before and um, just instantly just <laughs> felt not right with this person. And that's unusual for me. I am one of those people who usually likes everybody until they give me a good reason not to. Yeah. <laughs> And just right away, I could I could not handle this person. They were just getting on my last nerve, and I was having a very hard time. So one thing I suggest is to start asking the questions, why? Mm-hmm. Why am I reacting so strongly right. to this person? And I started realizing, kind of like you said, um, they were trying to control me. They were trying to tell me what to do in a kind of a backwards way all the time. And it reminded me of someone else in my life that I don't get along well with. Right. And so instantly I was kind of transferring another person that I already didn't get along well with, seeing them in this person, and the wall just went up. Like, uh, you know. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So I need to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? Why am I having such a hard time? And how can I help? Change it. How can I help avoid it? And sometimes, like you said, it is. Don't spend so much time with that person. Right. Sometimes you can't help it. So those those are the things that I have to realize. Um, They may try all they want to motivate me to do what they want, but it doesn't mean I have to do it. Right. But I also don't have to be snippy about it. Right. Because I like to say, uh, don't tell me what to do. (laughs) (laughs) And that's not the best way to handle it. I went yesterday to have a blood draw uh, for my next doctor's visit, (laughs) and uh, I have very tiny veins, and they roll, Mm. and um, so I told the lady ahead of time, I said, I've got really tiny veins, and they roll a lot, so I'm just letting you know this may not be easy, and um, so the first place she went was here where you would normally go. But they've used that vein so much that I've got scar tissue. And Mm -hmm. so I said, you can't get blood there because, and she said, just let me do my job. (laughs) And I said, I waited. And then I said, you know, they normally get it right here. She said, just let me do my job. (laughs) Just let me do my job. And I thought, I am not going to fight with this lady. So I said, But you don't want to be a pincushion. No. But so I said, so what's your name? Ah. <laughs> so I just changed the whole thing and got it about her and interest in her. Yeah. And, you know, how long have you been here and do you like it? And, I mean, there was just an instant change in her. That's and good. And she did get me first stick, and so I guess she didn't know what she was doing. Yeah. But I find sometimes if if I'm not hitting it off with people that you can turn it around and— make it more something that would be complimentary about them. And there's hardly anybody that will dislike you if you're making them feel good about yourself, about themselves. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really good, is, is find a place of connection. Right. There are many people that it doesn't seem like we really have anything in common. We're, we're not getting along. And when you begin a conversation, you start yeah. to find you do have some common ground, and that, that right. changes things a lot. You, uh, you mentioned a while ago about not liking somebody because they were like somebody else you knew. Well, I learned, and it really helped me, that I had a hard time with anybody who had a personality like my dad's. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of gruff and controlling and yeah. just got mad real easy. And I had somebody that I had to deal with on a pretty regular basis that was like that. Yeah. And it was so hard for me. But one of the things that God will do is he will keep putting those kind of people around you until you learn how to mm -hmm. treat them the way you would like to be treated. Yeah. And I think, you know, I used to think if people weren't like me, I'd think, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> and when I read some of the books about different temperament types, it helped me so much to realize that God has made us all different. Right. It's not like, you know, don't be that way. You know, that's the way they're put together. That's yeah. the way they're wired. And we can all improve on our faults, but I'm always going to be aggressive. I'm always going to want to get things done. I'm motivated by accomplishment, so I'm not going to like people that are just messing around and wasting my time for nothing, especially if I'm in a work mode. Thank God I do have other modes. But uh, the other thing, too, I've found out is if, if I'm around somebody that, I do have a difficult time with, and the conversation is kind of going in a direction that's probably going to irritate me, I've learned to just shut up. Mm. It's amazing how much trouble you can save yourself if you just be quiet. That's really <laughs> true. I'm not always good at that either. That's, that's a great suggestion is... I don't have to say everything I'm thinking, no. and it doesn't solve anything. I, I had a one person in particular that that person did not like me, and it was very obvious. And, and I'm thinking, what's wrong with them? You know, <laughs> how can they not like yeah. me? <laughs> but anyway, I'm one of those people that that like to address things. You know, I I like to try to work things out between us, and mm -hmm. so my. First impulse is usually, let's talk about this and find out, Mine you know, too. I'll apologize if I've done anything wrong. What what can we do to work this out? And I, I've learned to really pray about that first because I can do that too soon sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can do that when it's not really what's right for this situation. And with this particular person, I prayed and prayed, and I, I just felt like God not giving me that release to have this conversation with them. Right. And I kept praying, and before I knew it, and, and I don't know why it was there, and I don't know why it changed, but it just started to shift. That's right. And before long, we were great friends. And it's somebody that I really love and have a wonderful relationship with. So sometimes, I, like you said, shut your mouth. It's, it's not always do those things that are natural to you to pray about them first. Yeah. And also, though, the, the flip side, don't be afraid right. to have important conversations to work through things also. But I do believe that we, first of all, even if we are going to have that conversation, we should never do it without praying Oh, first. Absolutely. And praying for the right timing. Right. You, there's there's a time to try to have a conversation like that and a time not to. Yeah. And so I fully agree with you about the prayer. I think it's very, very important. And, you know, it's so easy for us to misunderstand people mm -hmm. because sometimes we take things that people are doing or saying in a way that they don't mean it at all. Right. Because— just our temperaments are different. So like, you know, my wonderful husband and I have been married 55 years, and uh, that's quite a record. It is. And we have a lot of fun together. We love each other, but we are so different. And my darling sweet Dave loves to tell me what to do all the time. <laughs> and it's, it's things, he wants to protect me. Yeah. So it's things about, you know, Oh, you, you shouldn't get out of the bathtub that way. You may fall and slip. <laughs> and I'm like, 
you know how old I am, I think I can get out of the bathtub by myself. <laughs> and I used to get really offended because I took it like he thought I was stupid. Mm-hmm. And that, was, yeah. that wasn't. Yeah. It's not at all what he meant. That's not at all what he meant. And one day he said to me, why do you act like I'm your enemy? Mm. And see, that's, that's how I was making him feel. Yeah. And he was doing it just out of, you know, maybe I don't need all the help he tries to give me, but the point is, is he is trying to help me. So that's one of those cases where I've learned, maybe I just need to yeah, let him think I'm taking the help and <laughs> not say anything. Listen and, you and know, get out of the bathtub the way that you want. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he does, he does protect me in situations. I'm, I'm not a very careful person, and I don't know what part of my personality does that, but I, I guess I think I can just do anything, and in some ways that's good, and in some ways it's not. And he, he operates more out of wisdom where he will, he'll do things the more careful way. Right, right. And, but I just think that's a good example that here he was trying to help me, yeah, and I thought he was trying to boss me around. His way of showing you love, right? Yeah. So we have we have to always remember that we need to look deeper than what a person's doing or saying to why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. And if we do that, a lot of times we'll find out that what they're doing is a very loving, kind thing, and we're just look, That's seeing really it wrong. Great. But one final thing that that I have thought a lot about and it's really helped me is to realize that not everything is about me anyway. Right. Because so often I think there's there's something that they're doing that has to do with me. Right. And they've got an entire life that revolves around all these other things that I have nothing to do with it. And right. so not taking offense, not being offended and right. realizing that they may be having a bad day for some entirely right. other reason and it it doesn't necessarily reflect on our relationship. Yeah. So a lot of that has helped me a lot. And if we just go back to the simple golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, that always comes back in a good harvest in our lives if we will treat people the way we want to be treated. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like saying again, because I think it's such a key part of this, is if you're having a difficult time in a conversation, turn it to being interested in them and what their life is like and compliment them, make them feel good about themselves, and people will... Sincerely care about them. They will sincerely like you yeah. if you sincerely care about them. Yeah. And I heard this one time, and I use it a lot in teaching. When you leave somebody's presence the next day, they may not remember what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. We hope you enjoyed today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.